everybody. If you watched our last week's video, you know that the new camper is now mounted to the F-350 chassis. And days later, we rolled it out of the shop for the first time and drove to Arizona for its shakedown trip. So we do have some good results from the shakedown trip and we have some stuff to fix. But what I thought I'd do is we haven't seen, done a full tour of everything that got completed inside. So I'm going to give you a tour and at the same time give you some feedback on how our first trip went. Our maiden voyage was a success, but not without some issues. We targeted the Truck Camper Adventures second annual rally as our deadline, and with a few compromises, we made it out of the shop in time to enjoy the weekend in Quartzsite, Arizona. tour I think what I'm gonna do is just start at the very back of the camper which is this rear hatch and we will just work our way up to the nose so the rear of the camper has two windows the one over there is on the passenger side and then we have one in the middle and the back wall over here there actually is a steel tube and the big spare tire will be mounted on the outside of the camper so that's why there's no window there but what's neat about this is we have this hatch that we set to open up it's secured by these clamps down here on the floor but this is your sloped back on the inside hopefully you can make that out and this big door can actually drop down we used it a ton during construction and what its purpose is is for any time we need to do something big maybe we're loading equipment like a bicycle or a kayak but maybe we have to do some servicing and we need to remove something from the camper. That's the best way to do it. 
And once you see the side entry door, you'll understand why that is the case. To open it, it literally is just pulling these open. Doing it one hand here. Steve can do it with his thumb, but. And you just push it open. So we have, oops. <laughs> There you go. You've got your big wide view. I'll show you some pictures, but we also have screens that we made. They attach these snaps all the way around. So you can actually have that complete open access dining. The bottom door is secured by these latches that go on the side. We showed that when we did the doors video. But what that also means is this back area is only openable and can be secured Oh, and see the strap is all the way there. Give it a good pull. And now we have a closed door. But it's only accessible from the inside, so it's completely secure from the outside. The only problem we had with the door on our maiden voyage, and it had nothing to do with traveling, it was just that this bottom edge here on the outside of the door had no weather stripping. So you can see those weather, weather stripping on the side, it's on the top. And because of that, we actually had some windy, dusty days and it blew inside into the camper. So coming forward from obviously the back door is the sofa. So we made two sofas, two sides I should say. One's 47 inches long and the other one is 51 inches long. But what we did that we think is fairly unique is we did make this a couch. So we upholstered the frame underneath. So this is a hickory frame, nice and sturdy, Gives doesn't have any flex in it. Attached all the webbing underneath, just like a couch. Four inch high density foam. Really no issues with the sofa area until we got to some of the rougher roads. So on our trip, we did highway driving. Everything in the camper was intact by the when, when we got to our destination, but on the rougher roads when we went off trail, things obviously got bounced around. So the couches kind of slid forward a little bit. They didn't come off, uh, nothing was damaged or anything. So we're gonna put some brackets in though just to keep it more secure. And actually, All right, so next, underneath the dinette, we have two bins and they actually fit pretty perfectly underneath each one. I think I showed these when we talked about storage on the truck camper, however, Neither of these have any kind of front or security measures. These were the only two things that just with highway driving did not work out well. So we definitely are going to put some security bars across these and keep them fully intact. Right now they're tied down so that we, so the drive home we would keep them in place. So staying along the passenger side, we never showed you the refrigerator, but we did get a, a refrigerator that is AC, an AC compressor. So things that worked well, obviously with a big refrigerator, this thing was stuffed when we left home, but I went ahead and got Camco's larger tension rods here and used those. I was able to secure everything, compress it back on the shelf, that worked well. Added liners to give it a little more sticky so stuff wasn't running around. Something that didn't work well is Steve wanted to make sure the glass shelves don't pop up so that is one drawback of a residential fridge so this this one did not survive really well this refrigerator also has a deli drawer which is wonderful and a big produce drawer and like I said it was packed to the gills when we left home so we obviously eat a lot cook a lot the freezer space is three drawers down here this one here is deep enough for a pizza, and you got two other drawers. This is a childproof lock. Here's the other half. It actually just snaps on here with a couple finger presses in and keeps the door secure and not opening. So installing a commercial refrigerator in an RV required a little bit more ingenuity than is normally the case. Normally an RV refrigerator is going to come with some screw type mounts which are going to secure the refrigerator. Um, since this is an apartment style AC refrigerator, I needed to uh, do a little bit of uh, ingenuity in order to make sure it stayed where it was. And after our uh, maiden voyage, we discovered that uh, what I had done was 
not completely sufficient so i'll discuss what i did and then we'll talk about what i'm going to have to do in the future so what i did do was to have on each of the four corners i had an aluminum plate in this particular case this is a piece of aluminum angle so it's got a tab which prevents the uh, refrigerator from right being raised and down at the floor level here we have two more tabs that keep in the in the box now this this box is made up to be about a quarter about actually about three eighths of an inch wider than the refrigerator and so i also had some some blocks put in here um, that had a about a, a little over a quarter of an inch of gap to make sure that the refrigerator stays centered in the in the space but this was only at the top and then on the rear you can see all the way back here there was a block against the wall that keeps it from going in any farther so the top was fairly well secured the bottom needs the same treatment these are the the, oh. the our, things for the top and the, 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 the our shims on the top so our shims came out it has so the wardrobe is next to the refrigerator and you saw a whole video on our storage solution and this actually worked really well except until we got to the second day of the trail run which was extremely bumpy we were learning how to steve was managing the rig to keep the balance down but in general the security bracket up here was very successful you know it stayed in place the bin stayed in place the security back here no fault of the bracket but this wall here actually has some flex and i guess there was enough movement and our poor little pot drawer was laying in the middle of the floor by the time we finished it. Here's the galley. In our episode 10 video, we showed how the kitchen came together. So here's just a review of the features. There is a large single basin stainless steel sink in a standard deep catch basket. A large cutting board covers the sink. And for cooking, we have a single induction burner that can be removed from its cubby and used outdoors. We also have a combination microwave convection oven. For storage, we have a set of four drawers that slide out, an area above the oven, and then there's eight total bins, six in front and two back under the sink. For trash, we have a food waste bin behind the sink. One thing that exists in the kitchen that was really nice to use is this big cutting board that sits over the sink. In our original design, Steve actually had an additional leaf here that would pop up. And I think we took it out, decided we weren't going to need it, but after using the kitchen for a few days and cooking meals and cleaning up and, you know, you got your prep and your cook and then your cleanup, one of the things I asked him to do is to build a bracket. This actually works really nicely if you just slide it open. I have, still have the surface here with the top, have the sink access, water, dirty dishes can get out of the way, you know, and then keep cooking and you have all of, you know, all your space here. We had the under lights and the fan, both with uh, dimmer and speed control. So as you're using the oven or cooking, the fans actually help vent uh, anything from the cook area outside through the vent that Steve created. During our day two trail run, the cutting board ended up on the floor and we did lose a drawer slide, leaving the drawer dangling from the cabinet. Thing that we got to try for the first time successfully was the diesel heater. So it sits underneath the kitchen cabinet, blows air out there obviously, comes towards the bathroom, and it actually was really efficient. So within about 15 minutes it's got a lot of hot air coming out of it, it has different speeds, it's variable. So next to the kitchen is the toilet sink area. You saw this as I walked in, I have this drape here. But it just comes off here and we put it on the inside wall and a snap in the corner. So it just stays out of the way, leaves us open. But we got some hooks installed. We had the primary toiletries up here in bins. And those actually worked really well as, as well with the regular highway and driving. But you don't anything bounce. We're going to modify this probably lip to make it harder for stuff to pummel out of here because after the real bumpy drive the second day of the trail run not the first day uh, these things were all over the floor which yeah some of you probably could have guessed that might happen as did I 
but hey, it was a shakedown trip. We needed to see what would shake loose. The light here is real simple. It just turns on, but it also dims. So if we need it, you know, in the middle of the night, we don't have to be really bright. Got our nice little triangle lavatory, installed our, paper, our toilet paper holder. Also added an outlet for blow dryer curling iron, and that is tied to the big inverter. So the, these put our fire extinguisher here. It's middle of the camper, close to the door, kind of easy access and next to the kitchen. We're sitting on the toilet area in our new camper. Just to check the fit. <laughs> Okay, so this is the entry area. We do have a fan above the entry area, just like a fan in the bathroom. We do have a light that's on a door sensor, so the door will open and that light will come on, which is actually very nice in the dark. This particular section of the entryway sits over the shower pan. So I showed you the shower pan in a couple build videos ago. So the other places we have duckboard right now, is just across the entry and then into the bathroom. All this area, uh, these two places had plumbing and electrical wires running through, so that's what the duckboard concept was about, was allowing Steve to run wiring under at the floor level uh, and create a nice floor surface for us to use. So we have not quite decided what to do with the rest of the floor. It's not finished, but I think after this weekend, we decided we both really like the duckboard look, and he's going to create a lighter version of it for across the main floor. Which... Next up, we have not shown any of our stairs. So this is the internal stairs. This is up to the bottom. It actually sits opposite the door that will have access to the camp or the truck cab. In the future, that wall has not been cut. I'm stowing Cooper's little dog mattress. Here's the current control center right next to the entry shower and before the stairs. You can kind of see everything here. Okay, here is the bunk. I made the bed for you all. At each corner we have the same outlet box that runs off the continuous small power inverter so we can run you know, small electronic devices. We also have a reading light that's tapped into the 12 volt system. We have a fabric headboard that's snapped onto the flat wall. It gives us something other than the inside surface of the camper for pillows and heads. We have the big roof hatch and we have the ceiling fan and the end of the fault ceiling where the vent comes out. So anything vented from downstairs will be pushed up to the bunk for heating and cooling. Last piece of the tour is the hatch. So it's a simple release here. Gotta pull that out. Do it on both sides, of course. And then has the actuator. So that is our tour and our results of the shakedown trip. It was definitely a little anxious on the trail. Going through a lot of the wash area was not a problem. The washboard was not a problem. Even a few of the dips here and there were not a problem. But that second day, we ended up in an area that was constant mobiles and wobbling campers. And we were with a group, so it wasn't just us, but the group was worried about us and, you know, along with their own rigs. But we were a new rig on the road, and it was just a great test. So it was a great way to, again, shake that sucker out. And we are very happy with the results, and we look forward to adding the few things that we want to add before we take a longer trip. And that will include some of the things I pointed out here, but also our solar panels are going on. Additional armor on the outside is probably the two biggest things. Work items. Oh, the water, I didn't say it, but 
I almost forgot that the water system did not work. So this trip being short, we just used bottled water to get through it. So that's like the first big repair because that was a big project to put that wet bay together. And when we pressurized the system, it failed. And we were already supposed to be on the road. So we did not have time to fix it before we left. So we got lots still to do. And we're very excited to keep this rig moving through the year. Thank you for checking out our camper build progress. We enjoy sharing our project and providing inspiration for yours. If you are a fellow do-it-yourselfer, thumbs up this video and follow our progress by subscribing. We hope to see you out on the road and good luck with your working and exploring.